Hello there, it's Jay here from Jay's Vintage Junk, and uh, today we're back on with the old Amstrad PCW project, and um, I think we have a power supply for it. This is the PSU out of that old PVR box I was telling you about. I've got it ripped down here somewhere. Uh, I'll show you basically what it came out of. Oops. Basically came out of um, this thing. I say it's uh, someone gave me two of these um, some time ago. The Tom's, um, Thompson little um, digital um, PVRs. Yeah, it used to have a 160 gig hard drive in it. And um, like I said, someone gave me two of them. Um, really, just to pinch the hard drives out of. I think the other one's down in the cellar somewhere. Anyway, I pinched the hard drive out of it some time ago. And these we know good for their actual intended purpose because um, with them being um, free view boxes they tend to update the firmware every now and again with the um, free view boxes and these have basically become locked so they couldn't receive an update anymore and um, they couldn't receive any new channels when the channels have changed these obviously couldn't update anymore and basically corrupted themselves so there were no use for their actual intended purpose but they are absolutely fantastic for robbing bits off anyway so I extracted the um, PSU out of that that's what I've got down here. Now, I will say I've had to do a little bit of repair work on it. Um, when I got it, it wouldn't actually power up, and I found one of our usual suspects, a couple of thousand UF caps there, had um, gone bad. Now, I didn't have any of these tiny little slimline ones, so I, uh, I managed to get them to fit. I put two just standard um, thousand UF. Um, that's a 16 volt one, same as what was fitted and uh, that one's uh, actually 25 volt one but that doesn't matter at all it's just what I had in my uh, it's just what I had in my parts bin and that seems to have actually done the trick it seems to have um, got this power supply working again and this should work really really well for the um, for the Amstrad I'm just going to bring the old uh, old meter in there hopefully you can see that and I'll show you what we're getting off this little power supply and one of the interesting things is it's actually got two 5 volt rails on it and I have traced the circuit out um, underneath, and they are two separate, it's not just the two tracks linked together underneath there, they are actually two um, separate plus 5 volt rails. And one of them I think was actually there just to drive um, the little USB socket on the front of the, uh, we look here, they actually, I don't, I've never seen this really before on um, these little recorders. I presume it was a way to get things off it, but it actually had um, USB on the front there. And it actually has a separate line on the power supply just to uh, power that little um, USB socket there. So, also obviously because it um, was a hard drive controller, we've got another standard 5 volts and 12 volts. So this should be absolutely ideal. We've got the 12 and 5 we need for the disk drive and then we have the additional 5 volts which can um, be used to uh, power the rest of the computer. So, because I mean if it's USB it should be good for what? At least an amp. I, I'm, rec I'm reckoning on that because, like I said, um, it's obvious. Oh, I can't remember what the USB standard is. Is it two amps maximum? I doubt it'll be two amps, but I reckon we'll get at least an amp off that um, that line there. And then we've got, like I said, the standard five volts, and we've got a twelve volts as well. But I'll show you that now. I'll just power this thing up, and uh, we'll, s we'll set the meter to um, twenty volts range, and we'll switch the power supply on. And I've got um, a crocklet lead here, literally just um, jammed in what we know the ground is. And I'm just using um, a couple of capacitor legs just to hold that in the connector. But if we go on this first connection here, which I think is uh, the first 5 volts line. Yeah, look, we've got um, a good 5 volts supply there. And then we've got the next one, which like I say, it's marked on the board as USB. And if we clip on that again, we've got a good 5 volts there. Now the next two are um, ground connections, then we've got, we've actually got 3.3 volts, which we're not going to use in this project yet, but it's nice to know we've got a 3.3 um, a volt line. Perhaps if, you know, in the future we may want to do something with um, SD cards with this thing, it could be an interesting um, project maybe. Uh, we've certainly got a 3.3 volt supply there that um, could be used, and we've got a, um, a nice 12 volt supply. And I think these last two, I think these last two were for um, something to do with switching, for switching the power supply into standby. But it seems as though if you have them disconnected, it actually just powers up all the main um, lines. So 
hopefully, if we leave them disconnected and we just use the lines that we want, this um, power supply will actually do exactly what we want. Let's switch that off now. And just see if we've got any um, residual current on these. Hopefully that's gone off now. Yep. And we'll unplug the power supply. I am being careful with this because there is a potential of being a little bit of charge held in that. That's the main um, DC smoothing capacitor. Like it charges up to about 500 volts that, so you want to be careful with it. In fact, we'll, um, just, we'll just see if there's any charge in that, just for safety's sake before I start handling this board. Let's um, get rid of my test setup there. I'll spin it over just to be on the safe side. And we know that side in there is ground, so we just hold on there. We'll just go on to here just to see. There's a few volts still in that, if you can see. 20 volts. It is draining off quite nicely, so it's not dangerous. There's no um, dangerous charge there anymore. So we're safe to we're safe to pick this thing up. So just be mindful of that, that um, some of these, even when you've unplugged them, that capacitor there can um, hold quite a nasty charge, and you know, it will give you a bite. So, this looks like it's going to be the power supply we are indeed going to use to um, power the Amstrad PCW project. Only problem I have discovered is, I'll just uh, bring it in here now. We've got the Amstrad's um, PCW project case here. And as we can see, this is just a little bit too long. But I don't think that's going to be a major problem. I really don't. Because, as it is at the moment, it's got a figure of eight connector on the end there. Now, I don't want to use that. What I want to use, I should have some kicking about in here. Yes, I have. I want to use an IEC connector like that. I mean, that's one I've salvaged off an old board or something. We could possibly use that and heat shrink them up, we'll see. But I want to use a proper um, IEC connector on the back of this, rather than um, rather than a figure of eight like that, so I can actually provide a proper earth to the case. Because, and this is something that people need to bear in mind if they're um, thinking of doing like I do, and recycling... Um, old power supplies out of other things to you know, like to do other jobs especially with these old computers because um, sometimes you buy the old computers and you don't have the original supply and you have got to improvise I mean if I didn't already have something for it something like that might be quite a good supply for the um, Sam Coupe I'm working on because it's got all the voltages you need there it's got your 12 volts and your 5 volts it's nice compact supply you'd have to case it up obviously what we've got, and the reason why we're um, going to change that figure of eight cable there for um, an IEC is to provide an earth, because in this is this is original application in that um, Thomas um, or Thompson little um, PVR. <coughs> Excuse me. It's what's called a double, a double insulated appliance, as in, yeah, the inside of it's metal. This is all metal, but it doesn't have to be earth. It only has a two pin connector because all the outside of the um, case was this plastic so you can get away with um, just a two pin input like that because you can't actually touch anything metal it's all surrounded by plastic it, hence it's double insulated you've got an insulating layer of plastic and then actually the second insulating layer believe it or not is air um, air is classed as an insulator so that's how it's classed as a double insulated appliance you've got a layer of plastic a layer of air and then the metal this case that we're going to be using, obviously, isn't. This is a metal case. This is what will be classed as a um, Class 1 appliance. So we need to earth the actual case of the um, computer to make it, basically, to make it safe for you to use. So if anything happened and this was to short out to the case, it can't become live. It basically provides a dead short to earth and it blows the fuse. Or it trips a breaker or some, it makes something disconnect so the power, um, the power basically gets shut off. So we will remove that and we will replace it in the case with um, an IEC connector like that. So that means we can probably cut off and we've looked on the bottom it's actually yeah it's going to be quite easy to do. We can actually cut off this part of the board there, shorten it down a little bit and I think with that done 
and we'll have to fit, find somewhere for some extra uh, mounting holes obviously because we're going to cut them uh, mounting holes off there but I, I'm pretty confident if we do that it should just and I do mean just it is going to still be quite a, um, a trim little fit but I do think it will just fit just right in the uh, in fact yes it will it'll fit just nicely in the case like that so as like I said, I think this is going to be the power supply um, we're going to use for this project. I'm not going to show me fitting this because it's going to be a, a bit of work and hassle. But what I'll do is I'll get this trimmed down and I will um, be right back when I'm actually ready to show you this actually fitted in the case. And we will um, hopefully see if we can get this um, computer to power up and work on this new um, little power supply. So um, join me back in a second. Okay, I'm back, and um, as you can see, I've just trimmed down, basically I've just took that, excuse me, that much off the end of the um, PCB, and as we can see, it does actually now fit in the space that I um, intended actually quite nicely there, so that's where the um, new PSU is going to fit. What I'm going to do is I've just cut that out of um, the casing because I'm going to use that as an isolator so basically that will be we will drill the holes through the um, bottom of the case and then this will go down as an isolating layer to ensure there is no way that anything on the bottom of that PSU let's see if we can get it in here hang on a minute we might have to fiddle and faff around here a little bit but Ugh, get in there in fact, I'm going to have to trim a little bit off that, I think. The nice thing with this plastic is it is um, easy enough to trim. Yeah, I've just cut it slightly uh, slightly too big. I'm just uh, trim a bit off. It's great because you can just score it with a um, Stanley knife like that and then... Uh, there we go. It'll just break off. Hopefully that'll go in there now. That's better. So that'll go down first as an insulating layer, like that. And that'll stop the um, the PSU shorting to the uh, metal chassis, which obviously we don't want to happen. And that will be um, fixed down like that on top. So I'll go ahead, go away and do that. I've also, I, um, I found a better um, IEC connector, if you look there. I've just salvaged that off another old um, scrap power supply that I found kicking about in my junk box. Well, that should be absolutely um, perfect as you can see the connectors come off the back it's already got an earth on it and it's already even got a nice little um, connector for the earth so I think we'll be using that to um, get the power into the case so um, join me in another minute or so when I've got this little bit further on and you can see um, see how we're getting on with it okay we're back and as you can see I actually managed to get the power supply installed in the case now that was <laughs> actually a lot more work than I was first um, anticipating. I'd actually found some things I hadn't foreseen and I had to make a few uh, modifications. Uh, the first thing is, I'll oh, point to some of the um, things I've had to do. The fuse on the power supply originally was um, in this corner here and I had to delete that mainly because when I actually put the case on it was in danger when I put the um, fixing screws to hold the case on actually shorting uh, the fuse out. It was far, far too close to the edge here. I have had to really bunch all this up to um, get it to fit and to get it to fit nicely. I have put uh, that piece of insulating plastic I showed before underneath the power supply. So that is completely insulated and it's rock solidly mounted. So what I've had to do basically is put a remote fuse in it because I don't want the power supply without its own um, quick blow fuse. So what... I've basically done, if we look on the back here, now I've blank, blanked off where the holes, there was an XLR hole there, and there was another hole from one of the old aerials here. Now, I couldn't leave them there because you had the potential that you could stick your finger through and actually touch something live on the power supply, so I've made a little plastic blanking plate. I probably will do that again at some point, it's not the neatest of jobs, but it was just so I could get something on there now. Literally, just while I was working on it, so I could decide, yeah, I'll make a plate for that, that'll work. Like I said, we can always make a better one um, in the future. And I've put the um, IEC connector in next to it there. And what I've done 
if you'll look here. Now I do need to get a cover for this because it's not covered at the moment. You can get a little like gel plastic cover that just fits over there and makes it completely safe. I've mounted the fuse off the board and I've got a little fuse holder and I've just mounted it on the back there. As you can see the case is now earth to um, mains earth. The neutral goes straight to the um, PCB, the power PCB, and the live obviously comes along here. If you follow it around and it comes to the uh, the front switch there and then obviously you've got a return that runs all the way back and back to the power supply so um, from the live from the power supply there to the switch and then back through the fuse to the um, PSU so that's the PSU installed in the case now while I had all this out I must admit I've made a few modifications to the board as well I changed the screws that I was using as standoffs for ones that were a little bit longer and then using a bit of the plastic uh, that plastic that I made the insulator from and made a few uh, plastic standoffs and I've actually just raised the board a few mil up from where it was because I was a little bit concerned it was a little bit too close to the um, metal underneath and it could potentially you know, something short out so I brought it back so it's probably about five mil off the um, board now um, I've also added an extra uh, mounting point there I have literally just drilled through the um, PCB where I knew it was just ground plane on both sides and it is only a double layer board this there's no internal layers in it so I drilled through where I had two ground planes there and just added an extra little fixing because at the mo uh, before that they only had a fixing there there and there and this part of the board wasn't really secure I wasn't happy about that with best, especially with having all the RAM there so like I said I've had an extra fix in there so this board now is really really solid in the case it's not going to move anywhere and obviously we've got the disk drive back in I've just got enough clearance between um, where the power connector is there and the um, where I put the edge connector on for the disk drive and the power so I'm happy with that side of it it would be better if there was more clearance but I've got enough clearance it's tolerable so again I'm happy with that so in the next video anyway we'll be actually getting this power supply connected up to the main board and to the disk drive and obviously to the um, video board there and the keyboard connection we'll get the, the rest of these parts in it in the next video and actually get this back into a, um, a working system so then we can case it up we can have the um, video out jack on the back we have the keyboard on the front. We'll do that in the next video anyway because I'm running out a little bit of time for uh, this one now and really in this video I just wanted to show you the actual power supply installed in the case and you know, it is actually you can switch it off and on with the front um, you know, with the front control there that does work now um, obviously we've got an IEC input there and it is fuse protected I'm happy with that and what I thought I'd quickly show you so we've got a three inch drive in there oops knocking things into the uh, tripod there apologies for that Let's just stick this uh, and it does fit you know the um, height of the um, transformer is okay everything does actually uh, go and fit together quite nicely as we can see oh, let's get that in there I will have to perhaps trim a little bit off that plastic at the back there as you can see it's uh, that will need trimming down a little bit that's why we do all these trial fits anyway when we're playing about with um, a project like this but quite pleased with that and now has an internal power supply and what I thought I'd just quickly show you is that now this is what I'm planning to use as an external three and a half inch supply it came off an old um, 486 sub notebook computer which was absolutely dead um, the battery had basically leaked in it and it has completely destroyed everything in the computer it is unrepairable but I thought this shouldn't go to waste this definitely did work before um, the computer was um, destroyed so hopefully we can modify this it's quite handy that it has just a standard dim plug on the back of it so we can get the pin out for the drive and we can break it out to hear what all the um, signals that we need we can put another DIN connector on the back of the case have a little ribbon cable and we'll have an external 3.5 inch drive to use with the Amstrad PCW when we um, obviously don't want to use the uh, little 3 inch drive in there so anyway I'm going to leave it there now for this video uh, just going to say I'm a um, really really cool um, thing I was um, on eBay earlier today like you do and there's been something I've been watching for a while so we were a big pile of um, vintage computer stuff over in Sheffield and I'm only in Manchester so I had a punt and I, uh, I've won the auction so uh, I'm going to collect that lot tomorrow um, after work it's about five o'clock tomorrow after work 
and it is quite a large lot of um, some rather interesting vintage tech. Uh, there's loads of software there, which is PC stuff, which I probably will shift on. I mean, I'm not a big um, PC software fan. What I really bought the, um, the whole lot for was there was a um, 5151 IBM um, green screen monitor in there, and I really wanted one of them for a long time to go with my... Um, IBM uh, 5150, the original IBM PC, because I've just been using a crappy old uh, green screen monitor with it. And I really, really wanted the original, and in this lot there is one. There's also an ACAR and multi-sync monitor, which will go brilliantly with my um, A7000. So I think we might be having some more um, ACAR and videos, and we'll get the A7000 set up with a proper... Um, multi-sync monitor. All this stuff is bought completely untested as well so um, we may have some fun doing some uh, repair work on some of this stuff. There's also a load of BBC disk drives and um, some other BBC uh, related stuff, some Acorn related stuff. All sorts in the lot so uh, if it's not too late when I get back tomorrow I may um, I may drag it all out into the living room and give you a quick show of what I've got. Anyway, like I said, I'm going to leave it for now because uh, it's getting late and I want to get to bed. So, I um, hope you enjoyed that little update on this project. Thanks for watching and uh, goodbye.